Hey, I wanted to answer a question that uh, people keep asking me, which is how is it that you go from, you know, a liberal family with like easygoing values, you know, for example, as an Ismaili, you know, life is not, not too difficult for you. you. You don't have too many restrictions placed on you uh, from the religion and you can live your life and you can continue to be, you know, to do the things that you need to do from that to like a very, you know, rigid, dogmatic, fundamentalist, you know, Salafi Muslim that, you know, has extreme restrictions placed on him in his lifestyle. Uh, everything from, you know, buying, not buying a house on mortgage or not listening to music and, you know, praying five times a day and avoiding certain job fields and whatever. Like, so, you know, from, from that to that. And I think there's many reasons why people, you know, either they, they become a fundamentalist, um, either Christian or Muslim or any other religion. I, I think there's many reasons why. And, uh, you know, one one is sometimes people have a near-death experience. For example, Hamza Yusuf or Cat Stevens who became Yusuf Islam. Uh, both of them had some sort of experience where they almost died and they were like, oh my God, is this it? Is this all there is to life? And then they were looking for some sort of purpose and meaning. And as well, other people that don't have that sort of experience, but also they're looking for meaning in life. Their life is kind of meaningless. They haven't found, you know, how to find meaning and make meaning in their life which is, you know, one of the secrets of life is how to find meaning and happiness. And so they, they latch onto religion, which, which gives them an external purpose, an external sense, an external happiness in, you know, purpose, right? Uh, there's other people that, you know, for marriage purposes or for identity purposes, they want to fit in or they want to, they want to belong to a certain group. And so they'll, they'll follow the religion. Or this could be initially why, uh, for example, some people may, may marry uh, someone that's a Muslim and convert for that reason. And then because of this, they uh, they start looking into the religion more and they become more religious. In my case, you know, I was, um, I, I read the Quran. I had some friends in high school that invited me to read the Quran. And then I was like so excited. I'm like, hey, look, it's God's final revelation. And this is how he wants us to live our life. And I was so excited. I went to tell my brother. I said, hey, you got to read this book. Uh, God sent us this book and, you know, he's going to tell us how to live our life and exactly what to do. And, you know, now, you know, you know, you can know what to do and make God happy. And isn't this what we all want, right? Because God's a creator and if he's happy, we're happy. So, you know, I was pushing my brother into leading, leading the Quran. And then what happens is after that, you start to get into the, into the zone. You know, you, you read more books on it. You, you talk, you become friends with more religious people who, uh, will make you even more religious. And then you go to conferences that, you know, again, they reinforce your values. And in none of this are you being very critical. You know, there's no, there's nothing about being critical. It's just you're, you're, you're going deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole. And then, you know, you, 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 you get, you get so into it that you, you don't realize that you're not looking at any points against it. And you think you're being critical. And sometimes what happens is you may have, um, you may have this, um, initial exposure to the religion from a young age. Like in my case, you know, you, you have this seed of, of religious uh, values that's put inside you as a kid and then you you become exposed to the religion and i've heard many many people you know when you ask them you know why this religion out of all the religions you're following you know a lot of people will end up following the religion that their parents follow even though their parents might not follow it anymore they might not be religious they'll 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 latch onto it because this seed of you know um of religion was put into them at a very young age and that, that's a lot of people too they're too scared to leave the religion because of fear of hell. You know, when when we're very young, you know, the things that we're taught, they, they, they stick with you. And for a lot of people, it's very difficult to overcome this type of brainwashing. Parents don't teach, you know, usually kids to be critical. They, they teach the kids, this is the right way. You know, Adam and Eve, for example, and the first man and first woman, and this is how we all came here and God sent these books. You know, this judo Christian Islamic, you know, religion. And then, they they can't get rid of that idea because it's so deeply ingrained in them, you know? And any sort of, you know, questioning is punished. Um and the thought that if they if they if they doubt, you know, this is Shaitan or Satan giving them doubts and and so they continue to believe this until until the old age. And then when they see when they have, you know, a glimmer of doubt, it's like it's it's hard to to listen to it because there's this fear of hell and this you know, the, you put yourself into a circle of people that will reinforce you. And then with Islam, it becomes even more difficult because then you're married to a Muslim and then you have your in-laws and your family members and you can't question, 
you cannot doubt, you know. If you doubt, you have to keep it to yourself because doubts are not really welcome. If anyone doubts, it's always like, yeah, talk to the sheikh, the sheikh, the mola, the molvi, the molana. He'll answer your questions. But he doesn't have the answers because he's also just going by dogma. And he's he's very good at the dogma. He's memorized lots and lots of books and hadith and literature and Quran. But he doesn't have the answers because he never looked into these issues. He never looked into the problems in the Quran. He never looked into uh, the issues with Dhul Qalanain or the issues with embryology or the science or the history or the fact that the stories seem to be copied. And, you know, we, they show up in uh, ancient, uh, Jew- in the ancient Jewish uh, tales which rabbis have been, you know, going along with, or the fact that, you know, most historians don't don't believe that actually was a Abraham or a Moses or even maybe Jesus. These Nobody looks into these things. No sheikh looks into these things. I mean, for the most part. And the one, there's a couple that do, I guess, but these are not the ones that you go talk to at your local mosque, right? And the, these ones will just tell you, you know, believe in Prophet Muhammad because he was a truthful alameen. He was the one that people trusted. Yes, people trusted him with the money. That doesn't mean that you trust me with my money and I go and tell you, hey, look, there's aliens coming. Watch out. And you'll be like, everyone, you have to believe Abdullah. He's a good guy. I gave him my money last week and he was he kept it safe. And he said, there's aliens coming. Watch out. Look, look, there's aliens. And people will be like, yeah, you're gonna, you want me to believe him about aliens because I believe him about, you know, I trust him with my money? Because he's an honest guy. And then he's telling me, oh, I'm the prophet and I get, you know, one fifth of all the war booty. And I get my pick of marrying any woman that I want without any any special favor just for me. And then, you know, I get special revelation telling people, go home and don't bother me. And, you know, all these special benefits I get. And you got to accept that because I'm a truthful guy. No, of course not. I, I You need to look at what I'm saying. Does it make sense, right? And so I don't know if I made it, you know, kind of clear about why people follow religion and how they get into it. But I think it's something that starts at a very young age usually. And if not, it could be because of identity. It could be because of meaning, lack of meaning in life. And people don't, you don't see the alternatives. They don't see that there's other ways to find meaning in life without attaching, uh, you know, latching yourself onto dogma. Anyways, it's kind of a bit of a rant. I don't know. I hope I help bring some clarity to some of these questions. If not, post follow-up question and I will try to answer as well from an ex-religious Muslim perspective. Thank you and bye.